shall be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Follow you approach it in love or you approach it in I in, follow you. And, and I think that's the that that is the the basis of the fruit. Yes. If you operate in love, Come on. then what manifests after that will be these other fruit. Yes. Yes. Or 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 you know they'll they'll they will manifest out of love as needed. As needed. In the situation and circumstance. Yes, sir. You know, because, I mean, in love, you can tell somebody no. Yes. You know, and and it may not seem like it's any of these other fruits, but it, it is. It is. Right. You know, you, you, you could be meek, you know, it's, it's in meekness that you're doing it. Come on now. You know, or, or, or whatever, but... Uh, the key to these fruit is love because love. they are a byproduct. All the rest are a byproduct right. of that. Because when you discipline a child, you can discipline a child in love, right? Oh, man. Oh, all the time. Love. If you don't, then you're doing it for the wrong reason. I think that's abuse. If exactly. you don't discipline a child in love, then you're abusing them. Exactly. Yes. Spoil the rod, fair the child. You know. <laughs> Go ahead, Bishop. Well, I think it's the, it's the, it's the motivation behind which you do a thing. Yeah. And I think I've often said, you know, I could go in the backyard and dig a hole and uh, put something in it and, and then cover the hole back up. And uh, to the casual observer, one may think I buried something. Another may think I planted something. It's the same, it's the same action. Yeah. But me, I know the spirit in which and the purpose in which I did the thing. And so Amen. other people's judgment of what you're doing doesn't necessarily mean that's what you did because they can just only judge naturally. And then oftentimes if they're not in the spirit, they're not going to understand what you're doing. So you Amen. can't allow other people's opinions of what your actions are to dictate whether it was spiritual or not. Exactly. It's how you do it. Now you said that the, the if, you're led by the spirit of, if you're led by the spirit of God to right. do that thing, then, then, then I think to not do that thing, you're not walking in the spirit. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And, and, uh, Bishop gonna say something. He wanted to say something. I didn't want to interrupt him. You got it, Bishop. Well, well uh, you guys were looking at this text from Galatians chapter uh, five. Uh, uh huh. You want to bring it back up, or you good? Well, I just, I just want, I just want to kind of ask, you, ask you some questions. Uh, so about the text and about <coughs> about uh, half what is not said. Okay. Okay. Now, you know he's beating the, he's beating the Galatians up. This whole letter is he's beating the Galatians up because. Uh, Apparently, he, he had preached to them the gospel. They had embraced the gospel of faith. Yeah. They had begun to live a life uh, of faith in the spirit. And somehow, somebody came to them and preached something else. Mm -hmm. them off track, got them back under uh, a, a, a perverted uh, mm -hmm. doctrine of law and grace mm -hmm. together. But 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 sake of time, chapter five, he comes back to him and he tried, he, he tried now to he tried to discipline them, yes, back right to the right place, and then and he cut them kind of deep, and then he tried to he tried to encourage them, yeah, yeah, you know, kind of like what your mom and dad did. You after they beat you down, they beat you down, they come back, you know, I love you, don't you? But you know, that they want you to understand that. What just happened to you was not intended to harm you, to hurt you. That was not the goal. But you needed to be harmed or hurt in order to take to attain the goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, so, so chapter five, one of, one of the key verses in chapter five is verse number six. The way you really, really kind of sums up is look now, what this, real, this thing is really all about is it, it's not about law. 
it's not about an external outward uh bring it out but it's it's a, it's, a, it's an inward thing and it's about mm -hmm. and i like how you say it says he said for in christ jesus neither circumcision availeth anything no uncircumcision but faith was working by love what, what verse six you say verse six yes sir okay and, and then again he says he said you did run well who did hinder you from that you should not obey the truth? Mm. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. Mm -mm. I'm going to live and live the whole world. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, I heard him clear. <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> me, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get the words. I've got the script. <laughs> It, it was a black, you know, it got to be a blessing. You know? <laughs> I, I kind of got the gist of what he was saying. I, right. I was trying yeah. to. I, I totally missed it. I could hear nothing he was saying. Man, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Only this group would come up with that. <laughs> well, I mean, he was really piggybacking off what we were saying, in my opinion, however, going to the scriptures where he went to sin <laughs> and said, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision evadeth anything nor uncircumcision. But faith, which worketh by love, which is kind of really scripturally saying what we were saying. And then he went down to 18, said that, uh, but if you're led of the spirit, you are not under the law, which is cool. And I, and I like, and I like, and I'll just say this while he's coming back in as it relates to um, having by rote memory the fruit of the spirit. I remember the Bible talks about he'll write the laws in your heart and in your mind. And so I think that if you truly have the love of God in your heart, you could not know the nine fruits of the spirit and still be displaying them in your walk because yeah. the, the love of God in you is going to govern you in yes. such a way that those are the attributes that you would naturally display Amen. if that's where you are. And I do yeah. understand yeah. knowing them. And of course, you know, I've read over them like you all, all the time and kind of know them, you know, can piece them together over time. But but I do think that the spirit of God is in the way it ought to be, then they would naturally be those attributes or characteristics that you would display in, in, in the way that you live. Because you'll get a check in your spirit that you're not going to feel right about what you're getting ready to say or how you're getting ready to act mm -hmm. if it's not in line with the word of God. Yeah, if you're truly amen. trying to walk yeah. in the spirit, you know. Exactly. You know? exactly. Because that's how the practice, I think sometimes, remember, I think uh, training, right? Sometimes people, when you kind of train somebody, they, they, they focus on what you demonstrate and more what's coming out of your mouth, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Because they, they're not yeah. learning. If, they're not, if you're not lying, you're, not, you're saying one thing, but your demonstration is not lying. It confused them. Well, that's the difference between the biblical, uh, the, the, in the Western culture and other cultures, whereby uh, you became a master because you sat up under a, 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 an apprentice yeah. And you actually you did you did the work, you know, under a master teacher. Uh -huh. Or or for us, we go to school and sit there and listen to classroom information yeah. and say we have a master's. It's different. It's one different. is hands-on learning where you've perfected your craft in doing. The other one is head knowledge and you haven't actually done anything. And so I think the the apprenticeship kind of methodology in G, the way it was brought up in, in that culture in the East is more of a learning and perfecting a way of learning than classroom instruction. Right. Is that the term for being a disciple? Is that, is yeah, that, I, that, that similar to that? Being a disciple? I, think it, I would say so. It, That's why that whole book was written. On point. The Eastern approach is on point because it's not about transforming your external environment. It's about you being transformed internally. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. And that, 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 that's the total kingdom of God come not by observation, but it's revealed from within. Yes, so sir. now those those fruits of the spirit that are written in that book should be descriptive of who I am or who I've been transformed into. So it, it, it really had, because of the Western culture, we went about, we have learned to transform our external environment. That's the way they do business. Yeah, the Eastern approach never was that. Jesus' approach never was that. It's, it's you being transformed internally. And you are supposed to fit the image that everybody else might witness it. You are a light that others might observe. And and now it's not us going out there making them become something that we are, but it's us being something that they can aspire to become. Exactly. Absolutely. A hard Absolutely. Hard. That's, yep. in, in my mind, that's, that's what... <clears throat> the very thing that Paul was demonstrating to the Galatians, 
because they started going back for the messianic yeah. religion. Yeah. And 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 uh, uh, Bishop was was bringing that out when he said, you know, Paul was getting in on. It. Yeah. You know, when he wrote this, and then this was kind of like nurturing them back. You know, right. he, he brought the rod of correction, and then you bring love into that. That's a part of the, the correcting. It's always got to be done in love. So yes. you yeah. have to nurture them in their correcting, correction. Yeah. Right. You know, he showed them the uh, fruit of the flesh prior to showing them fruit of the spirit. Yeah. Let so, me say this as well, too. I think that when we're dealing with um, uh, Seventh Day Adventists, uh, Hebrew Israelites, uh -huh. uh, those those religions that really uh, try to teach us and, and, and proclaim that we need to go back to the law. We're not living the law. We're not observing the law. The book of Galatians is, is probably, in my opinion, the best book in defense of what they're trying to purport, in my opinion, because uh -huh. yeah. it's just so much in there. Because that's exactly what they did. Exactly what these guys now are trying to purport that we have to live by is what happened to the folks in Galatia, in that mm -hmm. region. And Paul specifically addressed that. And so I think that the scriptures, uh, you know, versus arguing and hollering and screaming with them like they like to do. Uh, that book of Galatians, to me, in my opinion, I've told them on several occasions. It appears that you guys just ripped the whole book of Galatians out of your Bible. Yeah. That's the only way you can stand on the position that you stand. Yeah. But then, too, because that's why they'll, they'll downplay Paul and they'll try to diminish his role in scriptures. They'll say, um, well, whose scripture holds most weight? What Jesus said or what Paul said or, or, or things of that nature. So as to try to get you to think, OK, well, and like they'll say, well, you know, Paul did say that some of these things are hard to understand right. and, and paul said in certain instances that it's not it's not the spirit of god that said this but i'm saying it because i believe i have the spirit of god in me so they'll use those things as a way of somewhat diminishing the role of paul to elevate other scriptures above what he said but i i, I just go by the bible that all scripture is yeah. given by the inspiration of god regardless of who penned it or who he used to quote it it yeah. came from the same source exactly. and that's the difference yes you know you know what and tell you have uh this very time let me know but the this this other slide i was bringing up what people try to do is try to get the body of christ to be divided and and here uh elder you can read this for us uh, good morning chris hey good morning chris. brothers C4. Go ahead. Uh, What's going on, gentlemen? You got it, brother. Got it, man. Ooh, yeah, I'm, I'm I got on the road. Money. Hey, hey. I like to say I'm on the road, head, heading back. All right. I got, I, I got something for y'all to try next year because there's another little group, a little French fellowship group I hang out with. They go fishing down in Port Stewart every year. That's what I'm coming back from. Amen. Excellent. Roger, Roger that, bro. We're, All right, we'll be glad to. Y'all, y'all continue. I'll, I'll keep listening because I'm driving. Okay. All right, man. Be safe. Yes, sir. Let's uh -oh. mm -hmm. see how you sound now, Bishop. Hello. You ready, Bishop? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Yes. I hear you. Uh, if you well, like you always start. Like, you always start off good, but no, about I about thirty seconds into it, it gets crazy. Am I clear now? Well, it's a different voice. Still the same. Go ahead. Let me uh, get off this first. Uh, you want? Did you want that Galatians back up? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> One second. Got to find it. Uh, where is it? There it is. And then share. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so uh, so you look at verse number six. Well, he says he makes it. He makes the statement that what, what really matters is when it comes down to being. 
led by the Spirit. Because see, what, what we got to do is you got to tie all these things together. Because this is all one piece. This is all one discussion he's having with them, and he's trying to get them to understand God's way. Yes, sir. And so he says, now, so I, my question was, uh, how do you tie verse 6? Verse 16, yeah. verse 18, and verse 22. Six, 16, 18, and 22. You'll read 6 first. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, well, what I really want you to do is just be thinking about what all this really mean? What is he really telling you? Right. Well, Jackson better answer for you. <laughs> 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 Jackson better answer. What, what verse six anyway? First. All right. So, for, in, for in, let me read it. Let me read it. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith, which worketh by love. So what it sounds to me is like, you know, we whether it be actions or, 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 um, you know, what we do or not do, right. that in and of itself doesn't mean anything. If we don't have the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen in love, then the rest of it doesn't mean anything. Right. Okay? Right. And so, so uh, you, when we are working things uh, either in the flesh, uh whatever actions we do as we've talked about before if we're not and, and we're talking about the kind of love not the love that we have in the flesh but the love of god the love of our savior jesus christ yes, that's what we need to have and elder you know brought up something earlier you know it's that uh, and i think uh, uh brother jimmy did as well again it's that understanding that is beyond what we ourselves do right okay and so that's, you know, from the point that we need to, to operate. Whether we understand it or not really is not the point, that we just do it in love. Because, see, love is sacrificial, is it not? Come on, I mean, Jesus displayed that. And love is sacrificial. I think Brother Jimmy said a long time ago that it's a verb <laughs> as well. And so that's kind of what I get from, from verse 6. And, and also what I got from, from all three of these okay. is very specific. And this is talking about the law versus the spirit. Yeah, well, Brother Addison, before you go on that first six, we talk when we say uncircumcision and circumcision, is mm -hmm. that representing what? That's representing those who who are under the law. Uh-huh. And those who are not. Gotcha. Okay. I want to make sure they understand that. I don't okay. want to understand and that. so uh 16? Uh, 8, he said, also is, uh, no, what was it? It was 6. 16. 16. 16. This, is this I say, then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right. Okay. Uh, the law is dealing with the flesh. Uh -huh. The spirit is, is dealing with the spirit. And what happened is we moved from a, a, a law that was written on stone to a law that's written in our heart, in our spirit. And so this is going from a, a transition from the Mosaic law to this new covenant. That right, spiritual now, right? We yeah. have. Right. Yeah. I, don't know I think that, that's what yeah. those, yeah, is, is, is spirit. Yeah, and so I think that's what what this is what what uh, these three scriptures are are talking about is the difference between them and the results between the two. Right. And now, so let, let me let me just uh, I'm just thinking out loud. Let me go back to verse number six. Now. When you hear the when you hear the word faith in this context, uh, now given what you already know about what the what the what the scriptures say about faith, 
that James, James said that faith now puts it there. Uh huh. Now, faith, though, really, what it is really trying to get you to understand it is that when you say you have faith and God Himself does not do anything, then that faith is there. Wow. Say that again. Say yeah. that again. If you say you have faith, biblical faith, the kind of faith that Jesus lived by, uh -huh. that faith will always result in God the Father Himself doing something. Yeah. That, that, that's that's, that's great goal. And, and if you say you have faith and God doesn't do anything, then he, that, he said that thing is there. Now, now, works of the flesh never enter into this picture. He, 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 he has, he's assuming that you understand that when you say faith, you are implying that you're talking about God working, yeah. not you. Mm. And that, see, that's why people get confused when they say Paul taught something else when he said that man is justified by faith alone. Paul's not talking about something there. When man is justified by faith alone, Man is justified by what God himself has done himself alone. Yes. Not what you do. Come on now. In justification, it is your embracing God and trusting faith that allows God to work something in you. So whenever I, when, when I hear the word faith, my mind always lies in the faith. When I say faith, I talk about somebody who's looking at God and they're expecting and trusting God to do something. And if God don't do it, then there's, there's something wrong, not with God, but there's something wrong with the person who says he has faith. Mm, okay. Yeah. Are you with me? Yes, yeah. So, so in, in the text, he's saying, look, faith operates by love. Yes. And, and love always, well, as far as Jesus is concerned, Jesus said, the only way to identify love is through obedience to the Father. Yes? Yes, because he's the one leading, right? He's the, you're being led. By and there is no other way for you to express love biblically except through obedience. Come on. <laughs> and so Jesus said, if a man loved me, come on. He will keep my word. Come on. He didn't say he'll go to the altar and cry. He didn't say he'll, that, that all that is all well and good. But if in the end, if it, if, if there ain't no obedience, Jesus said there ain't no love. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he said, he that keepeth not my, not my word, he don't love me. Wow. <laughs> Woo! Mm-hmm. Let me make sure I got, make sure I got that right now. Cause that's, that's, uh, that's 1424, I think it is. John 1424. He that, he that loveth me not, keepeth not my saying. So, so he, he, he's trying to, he's trying to bring this thing all the way down to the, to, to the very center because the Galatians have gotten themselves in some serious trouble and he's trying to get them back on the right track. Right. He's got to, he's got to lay the foundation of things down there. So he said, so you start looking at John, John 14. You're John? Yeah, John chapter 14. Okay, sorry. You were there. I don't know why you left. Yeah, yeah I was going back to Galatians. Yeah. Okay, so John 14, he says in the verse 23, 24, he said, If a man love me, he will keep my words. Yes, sir. And my father and I will love him and will come unto him and will make our bowl with him. Now, I'm going to tell you something now. See, you talk about signs and, and, and all these things that follow. If, if you can get past this part right here, he said that he and his father will come and make their abode with you. Come on now. But, what, but what's going to cause them to show up is your being willingness to enter into unconditional obedience. Hmm. Hmm. You, you ain't worried about the consequences. You ain't worried about your name. You ain't worried about what folk gonna think. You ain't 
you worry about what it's going to cost you. What you locked in on now is you have seen something that said, and this, and this is the thing I find that people miss. See, when you don't understand the need for a thing, it is then that you waver in your commitment to the thing. Right. Okay. okay. But when that thing has been made relevant to you, you understand me? See, it, it, it's one thing for you be watching boxing and that guy get hit in the mouth with okay, right? But it's a whole other thing when you're in the ring and you get busted in the mouth. <laughs> uh huh. You see, when you get busted in the mouth, everything becomes relevant then. Yes. <laughs> and so, and so he said that in, in order for God really to work in you, he can only work in you through faith. Yes. And that, that faith has always had this goal toward your obedience to him. Mm. And in the process, your love for God is being evidenced and being manifested. Okay. You, you, you know, one thing I, I was telling somebody the other day, Bishop, was some people confuse faith as religion opposed to faith in God. The, the focus is not is not faith in, in anything, it's faith specifically in God himself. Does that make sense now? It's not a religion. See, the thing is so serious. You see, when you start to understand the part God says, this thing is so serious. I am requiring you to not have faith in certain events. I am requiring you to live by faith. Come on now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got no crisis. The, the nature of the problem demands that you always are looking to me. Yes. Always. There you go. And, and, I, and I think that's the kind of kind of demonstrates the necessity for that interacting, that online kind of dynamic relationship that we have with the Lord that he's speaking to and through us at all times. He's speaking to and through us at all times. And uh, that it's not a setting. It's not a particular setting. It's like when we're interacting with our families, the same situation. We're interacting on a grander scale, same situation. There's no there's no protocol aside from that. And that's the difficult, I think, uh, I think that's a difficult idea to embrace is that we're always ministering. Yes. 24 7. We're always ministering in the face of our families, in the face of our children, in the face of our God. We're always ministering, and He's always seeking to work through us. And that's where the faith comes in because faith in God. It's, 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 it's believing what he's speaking, what he's speaking, and, yeah. and, and, and uttering that, re, re, uttering that again. And, and, and that's the, I, I'm trying to think of the simple way to put it, is that say what he says. Yes. You know, listen listen to hear what he's saying. Right. And, and, and I think I got clarity on that scripture where it said, fake it worth it by love. Yes, sir. And he tells us, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Come you'll on, keep come my on. word. So when I tell you something, if you love me, you're going to tell them that. Yes. If I tell you to respond in this manner, if you love me, you're going to respond in this manner. Come on now. And, and, and that's the, I mean, that's a serious nugget to take away today because it's, it's not, it's not conditional. It's all the time. It's, it's every moment of the day, every moment of our waking hours when the Lord is speaking, we should be seeking to hear what he's saying. And then I guess what's the word? Act out. Uh -huh. you no, know, uh, to, to manifest it, whatever he's saying, and and we're doing that not because we want to, but because we love him to the point that we're we're, we're compelled to. Right. And, and and the Garden of Eden was a good example for us. It wasn't Jesus's will that he go to the cross. It was the Father's will that he went to the cross, and he even asked the Father, if "There's some way that you just cut compassion on me, let it be so." But what he said eventually was. Because his love of the Father, he said, not my will, but thine will be done. Mm.